how to close the doors all the doors open to Satan can only be closed by repentance and prayer. If it is sin, confess, and abandon it. After that, you pray and take authority over all the demons that exploited these doors, which were opened. You cast out all those who may have taken up residence in you. You strike with the fire of God all those who may have had control over your life. And you close all those doors which you had opened by the blood of Jesus Christ. To do this job well, refer to the teaching entitled Personal Deliverance, which you will find on the website www.nkavail.org. If it concerns people or animals, you separate yourself from them as quickly as possible. If it concerns objects, you get rid of them as soon as possible. If they are your own objects, you should throw them away. If it concerns borrowed objects, you should return them. If they are stolen objects, refer to the teaching entitled Restitution, which you will find on the website www.nkavail.org. If it concerns things that you gave to people, either you get them back if possible, or you pray and break those links if you can no longer get them back. If it concerns words or curses, you cancel them in the name of Jesus Christ. If it concerns your objects that Satanists are holding in their dark world, you pray and cover all those things with the blood of Jesus Christ, and you consume them by the fire of God. If it concerns debts that you owe, ask for forgiveness from the Lord and repay them if possible, and cancel every links that resulted from that. Whatever be the case, the moment you finish, you need to pray and take authority over those demons that exploited the open doors to ruin you. You strike them with the fire of God and close the doors once and for all with the blood of Jesus Christ. There is a very big advantage in closing all the doors that are open to Satan in our lives. When we have managed to close all the doors, and when we make every effort to live without open doors, not only do we approach salvation with assurance, we also live without fear whenever an evil come upon us. We totally escape from the sin of guilt. As our brother Job, we do not panic in times of evil. Watch out for counter-attacks when you fight. Do not think that Satan will congratulate you for having destroyed his works and his installations. He prepares to launch a counter-attack without wasting any time. We should therefore watch to thwart or stop his counter-attacks even before he sends them. For that reason, when you engage in a warfare, as you already know that Satan will send his arrows and his demons against you in return, you need to engage in another warfare straight away to strike by the fire of God all the demons that will be sent against you, and you return immediately all the arrows that will be sent against you. You turn them against those who are going to send them, by commanding that they be destroyed by their own arrows, and that they should fall into the traps that they have set against us. Discouragement Do not forget that another renowned weapon of the devil against us is discouragement. You should constantly strike the demons of discouragement, and you should not allow yourself to be caught in the trap of discouragement. No matter the situation that you are passing through, no matter the difficulties that you are enduring, you should never give in to discouragement. Understand that it is the Lord our God who has the final word. Even if it happens that you sin against God, you should not allow yourself to be carried away by discouragement. The Lord is the only one who justifies. Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died, and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Romans 8 33-34 Cry before God, confess your sins, and get back to warfare. Satan always does all he can to push us to the end of our strength. Keep this firmly in your mind. But, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? Romans 8.35 The Bible tells us, you have not yet resisted to bloodshed, striving against sin. Hebrews 12.4 WHO are our enemies? Do not fall into the trap when you are engaged in spiritual warfare, of misinterpreting the words of the Lord which say, But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. Matthew 5:44. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. For in so doing you will heap coals of fire on his head. Romans 12:20. When the Lord talks about enemies here, he is not talking about Satan and his wicked spirits, he is talking about normal human beings who very often are our enemies. The Lord will never ask you to go and bless Satan and his demons, nor to do them good. He will neither ask you to give food to Satan and his demons, 
you should therefore know how to understand the meaning of God's word. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. If a science 6.12. Those that the Lord considers as our enemies, whom we are supposed to bless, are flesh and blood as mentioned above. On the contrary, we must fight against all the other enemies we have enumerated, hence the need for spiritual warfare. Some verses as for the passages of the Word of God concerning warfare's prayers, you have enough in the Bible, especially in Psalms. Here are some that we have selected for you, Psalm 510 Destroy them, O God. Let them fall by their own counsels. Cast them out in the multitude of their transgressions, for they have rebelled against you. Psalm 7, 6 Arise, O Lord, in your anger. Lift yourself up because of the rage of my enemies. Rise up for me to the judgment you have commanded. Psalm 28, 4 Repay them for their deeds and for their evil work. Repay them for what their hands have done and bring back on them what they deserve. Psalm 40, 14-15 Let them be ashamed and brought to mutual confusion who seek to destroy my life. Let them be driven backward and brought to dishonor who wish me evil. Let them be confounded because of their shame, who say to me, Aha, aha. Psalm 58, 6-8 Break the teeth in their mouths, O God. Lord, tear out the fangs of those lions. Let them vanish like water that flows away. When they draw the bow, let their arrows fall short. May they be like a slug that melts away as it moves along. Psalm 59, 13 Consume them in your wrath. Consume them till they are no more. Then it will be known to the ends of the earth that God rules over Jacob. Psalm 71, 13 May my accusers perish in shame. May those who want to harm me be covered with scorn and disgrace. Psalm 83, 13-18 Make them like tumbleweed, my God, like chaff before the wind. As fire consumes the forest or a flame sets the mountains ablaze, so pursue them with your tempest and terrify them with your storm. Cover their faces with shame, Lord, so that they will seek your name. May they ever be ashamed and dismayed. May they perish in disgrace. Let them know that you, whose name is the Lord that you alone are the most high over all the earth. Psalm 86, 17 Give me a sign of your goodness, that my enemies may see it and be put to shame, for you, Lord, have helped me and comforted me. Psalm 119, 78 May the arrogant be put to shame for wronging me without cause. But I will meditate on your precepts. Psalm 140, 8-10 Do not grant the wicked their desires, Lord. Do not let their plans succeed. Those who surround me proudly rear their heads. May the mischief of their lips engulf them. May burning coals fall on them. May they be thrown into the fire, into merry pits, never to rise. Psalm 141, 10 Let the wicked fall into their own nets, while I escape safely. Psalm 144, 6 Send forth lightning and scatter the enemy. Shoot your arrows and rout them. Lamentations 3, 64-66 Pay them back what they deserve, Lord, for what their hands have done. Put a veil over their hearts, and may your curse be on them. Pursue them in anger, and destroy them from under the heavens of the Lord. Deviations all sorts of follies are practiced nowadays in the name of spiritual warfare, and I find it wise now to close this teaching without dwelling on this point. More and more. Many sorcerers are made to be called pastors, evangelists, prophets, apostles and others. They take advantage of the misery of the population so as to subject them to all possible tortures, under the pretext of delivering them, or leading them to spiritual warfare. Satan once again passes through these demons in flesh to cause confusion in the work of God. There is so much confusion nowadays that many of those seeking God do no longer know where to go, nor who is a pastor and who is not. In these end times, Satan has asked his demons to disguise themselves as pastors and multiply themselves in great numbers, to operate quickly, because their time is over. And with a lot of seductions and incantations, these sons of perdition have succeeded in blinding millions of people, who foolishly follow them into their abominable practices without thinking. There is even a big Pentecostal sect that went as far as calling their denomination spiritual warfare. This sect with the J. Zabel as leader has become another powerful instrument in the hands of Satan for the recruitments of new agents, and for the initiation of several women into witchcraft. If it is really God that you are seeking, 
come out of all those satanic clubs that spend time boasting of power. If you run after power, you will find yourself in the world of darkness. When you go round the cities today, you are overwhelmed by the types of teachings and practices in churches. The pastors of Satan have turned churches into centers of recruitment for Satan. They teach rubbish to those listening to them, and push them into follies in order to open large doors to Satan. They lead the faithful, many of whom are not even baptized into water, into what they call spiritual warfare. And during these so-called warfare, you hear them shouting, Satan I cut you, cut, by making big gestures as to cut him. In other places, they strike sandals against the ground, under the pretext of striking the enemies. Still in other places, they clap hands, as a sign of slapping the enemies. In other places you hear words of folly such as, Satan I oblige you to drink the blood of Jesus, I throw you into the sea, I send you into the depths of the earth, I purge you with the blood of Jesus, I purge you with very hot red pepper, etc. We also meet fools who tell Satan, Satan your teeth are yellow, Satan your mouth has a bad odor, etc. These are the things sorcerers do in churches today, and call such madness spiritual warfare. There are also places where sorcerers hide behind what they call deliverance to initiate thousands of people into witchcraft. During deliverance sessions, they ask people to take a deep breath with all their strength until they urinate or defecate on themselves, or vomit, or fall, etc. After this stage, sorcerers come and cause them to spin around with their eyes closed, while striking them both on their chests and simultaneously on their back, and do everything possible to make them fall, because it is a sign, which according to them proves that these people have been delivered. Other sorcerers, in order to pray for the sick, tell them that if they have faith that God can heal them, they should go round the yard seven times while running. It is quite pitiful when you see old people without strength running outside the yard. Another sorcerer who calls himself a prophet sends round chewing gums from Ghana, which he calls chewing gum missile while promising to the ignorant who receive them that if they chew one of these chewing gum missiles, it will be a missile that they will be sending in the camp of their enemies. There are other sorcerers who use fans to deliver people. They deceive the ignorant by telling them that the air released by the fans will chase out their demons. These poor and simple are therefore called to fall the moment the air from the fan blows on them. Others also draw a line on the ground with a piece of chalk and order the sick to cross the line drawn so as to obtain their healing. In the big sect called Universal Church, sorcerers sell oil they claim to have come from Israel, and they use brooms to chase out evil spirits from the house. Photos, to pray for somebody afar or who is unable to get to them, salt, for your husband to love you, etc. In front of their temples it is written stop suffering, come, a better life awaits you. Other sorcerers in order to demonstrate their powers create a scene somewhat similar to that of the woman with the issue of blood in the Bible, and who made efforts to defy the crowd to touch Jesus. These sorcerers create similar situations, surround themselves with a large crowd of youths who stand as obstacles and ask the sick who want healing to do everything they can to sneak in with these obstacles and touch them. We also followed another teaching where people were recommended to eat a lot of meat and other to be strong in spiritual warfare. If this teaching were true, what would become of people who cannot afford to buy meat? Do not forget that meat is still a luxury for millions of people. It is not by eating a lot of meat that we become strong in spiritual warfare, it is by fasting and praying. Many other sects such as the Catholics and the so-called Evangelical churches ask their faithful to bring gallons of water, so that they pray over it and transform it into what they call holy water. And you see faithful who carry along flasks and gallons of waters to be blessed, and this water will be carefully preserved in their houses for several practices according to the recommendations given to them. Other sects abusively use oil for witchcraft practices. You even find sorcerers pastors who sell Chinese drugs in their assemblies under the pretext of helping those who are suffering. All methods are good for Satan's agents today, to initiate people into witchcraft. These demons lie to their faithful by telling them that those drugs cure all types of diseases. In this way, they enrich themselves at the expense of these poor and miserable faithful. They have created a whole network of marketing to commercialize these products, promising the sellers great fortunes going from big Mercedes to boats, without forgetting houses, other demon pastors actually engage into investing money by promising their faithful high interest rates that no bank in the world could offer. At times, they even offer interest rates of up to 200% in just few months. 
They even run after unbelievers in order to propose their enticing business. The Gospel of Satan called the Gospel of Prosperity that sorcerers preach today, is a powerful weapon that Satan has used to capture the greedy and all those whose hearts are attached to the things of the world. Testimonies pastors who signed pacts with Satan to become famous during one of our visits to West Africa, some pastors shared with us this sad testimony that I would like to share with you. It concerns what happened in Ivory Coast not too long ago. More than 50 pastors who were recognized as great men of God, with churches of thousands of faithful, were exposed by some great voodoo priests. It was in fact at the homes of those great voodoo priests that these so-called great pastors, founders, powerful and renowned sought for sorcery in order to attract people into churches. To succeed in their evil projects, some of these sorcerers buried the humps of people with humpbacks beneath their altars as recommended to them by the priests of Satan, in order to have absolute control over each and every member of the church. Others buried a white horse beneath their altars before construction so as to have absolute power of seduction and control over all the faithful, etc. This explains why today, many people recognize the truth when it is preached to them but they find it difficult to leave the false assemblies full of all rotten practices in which they find themselves, whereas these abominable practices are visible to all. It is because they are bound by the incantations that were done in those satanic places, by these satanists that are mistakenly called pastors. When I asked these pastors who explained the testimonies to us, how these sorcerers obtained the humps of people with humpbacks, they explained to us that they are generally offered to them by these voodoo priests themselves. Voodoo priests generally go to the graveyards of people who in their lifetime were recognized as humpbacked so as to dig their remains. These sorcerers had received the power to inflict women with sicknesses such as sterility, fibroids and other sicknesses common to women. After these women were confirmed as being sick, they were again capable of healing them through witchcraft, and all these were registered as miracles and miraculous healings. Imagine the extent of the abominations of sorcerer pastors, all with the aim of attracting large crowd. Remember once again that all the so-called mega churches are churches of Satan based on witchcraft and other practices that cannot be named. And this example is not peculiar to West Africa. It is the same practice worldwide. You now understand that the spiritual warfare is really tough and children of God must plunge themselves into warfare so as to liberate those that are under the chains of Satan. Many pastors servants of Satan, to win the crowd today, conspire with unbelievers and other agents of Satan, and give them huge sums of money, asking them to come into their churches and pretend to be either lame, or blind or people with serious illnesses. These hypochondriacs will give the impression after the so-called prayer that will be made that they are healed or delivered, or that there has been a miracle. These sorcerers cause so much confusion in the work of evangelism in such a way that people have become skeptical even when true miracles or healings take place. We are in the last days, do not be surprised. You should instead equip yourself for spiritual warfare. Artificial Flowers brother found himself one day in the Universal Church where artificial flowers were being distributed to each and every member. According to the explanations given by their leaders, these flowers were to help sick all the evil spirits, impurities, forces, spells etc. in their houses. Every faithful, at a given period, and according to the instructions received returned the flowers to them so that they could drive out the evil spirits that were captured. Let everything that has breath praise the low rather leaders of so-called prayer camps ask all the participants to pray while shaking every part of their bodies, on the pretext that these parts breathe and so must take part in prayer. You find them praying and violently shaking their heads, moving their arms, legs, etc. Deliverance techniques with regard to deliverance, other leaders use what they call spiritual nails, which they send deep with a spiritual hammer into the heads of the person for whom they are praying so as to torment and flush out a stubborn demon. And you hear the so-called demon that they want to drive out shouting, Do not nail me, I will come out. What a comedy. Other leaders explain how to put spiritual tourniquets when you want a demon to come out through a precise part of the body. As for the mysterious demon that moves all over the body, many tourniquets need to be put. These sorcerers say to the presumed demon, Go up to the stomach. I place a tourniquet at the level of the lower abdomen so that you will not descend anymore. And so on and so forth until according to them, the supposed demon comes out either through the mouth or through the fingers. Others still, in order to fight well, say this, Satan I arrest you, I place you in front of me, I box you in the name of Jesus. I strike you in the name of Jesus, I break your leg, 
I paralyze you, I beat you on the stomach. As for them, it is a real fight with Satan that they fight in the name of Jesus. Physical spiritual weapons in some assemblies, so called Christians fight while saying this, I take up my gun now, my rocket launcher, etc. and, while imitating soldiers in the war front, they release so much noise according to the respective sounds of warfare instruments. Just imagine the disorder. The noise often appears as that of speaking in tongues, but when you listen carefully, you realize that they are carnally fighting with humans. They assume having their weapons in their hand while imitating the noise produced by bullets with their mouths. When looking at the scene, you just think they have weapons in their hands considering even the position they maintain. Prophetic action There are other assemblies in which so-called servants of God ask their faithful to bring sand. They pray over this sand, so as to make the sand an instrument of destruction of all their enemies. They say that if these enemies move like them on the earth, if they are physical persons, they will die. If not, they will escape. By so doing, they kill physical persons while protecting their demon brothers. Others instead tell their faithful during night vigil to line up at midnight and go round the quarter so as to win souls. According to them, it is a prophetic way by which the Lord will deliver the quarter and so draws the dwellers' hearts of the quarter to the church. Each step corresponds to a soul that will be attracted to their church. Other sorcerers go further by asking their faithful to bring handkerchiefs on which some spiritual enchantments will be made so that they can deposit in various places, for business people they will deposit theirs at their business sites, for students, they will deposit in their school bags, and for workers, they will deposit in their offices at specific locations. These spiritual enchantments according to these pastors will enable their followers to get innumerable successes that could not be obtained otherwise. Others base their ideas on the story of Jericho and ask their faithful to count up to seven times, followed by a loud shout of joy, of deliverance and of victory. And according to these sorcerers, if they act with faith, they will obtain their long-waiting deliverance. With this, you hear them screaming with all their strength, some of them carrying chairs on their heads while shouting. The musical group amplifies the noise with their instruments. Children also engage in uncontrollable disorder. This practice varies according to the churches, instead of shouting, faithful are told to dance for long so as to obtain similar deliverance as with Jericho, or to welcome the presence of Jesus Christ with a great shout. By so doing, curses, poverty and other chains would fall off according to their faith. Even when they are out of breath they must continue until they receive a signal from the person leading to stop. Demonology Other sorcerers venture into the study of demons, their names their position in the government of Satan, their location, their manifestations when they possess a human body and the different doors through which they can come out. They put all this into writing on a piece of paper that they give to each person who is to undergo deliverance through soul cleansing. They sell this piece of paper to people at various prices, and the cost of deliverance varies according to the level of possession. They teach them that deliverance through soul cleansing is indispensable and renewable every three months. Even pastors have to undergo this process. They go either to those that have consecrated them or to the prayer camps, most often in Ghana, etc. Our weapons of warfare for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. 2 Corinthians 10, 4 Holy hands lifted up the Bible tells us in 1 Timothy 2, 8 I want men everywhere to lift up holy hands in prayer, without anger or disputing. Therefore, Holy hands lifted up are powerful weapons of warfare. When true children of God lift up holy hands and prayers, the effects are felt in the spiritual world. Oil the Lord has put oil at our disposal, and we can use it for several purposes. The use of oil is not restricted in the Bible. This implies that every child of God can freely use oil to anoint themselves and pray if they're ill, or to anoint their house or their properties, etc. But today, Agents of Satan have introduced other satanic practices in which they instead use oil to initiate people. There are sects that prescribe special oil to their followers, others ask them to bring oil so that they can purify it, and define what they have to do with the said purified oil. Others still ask their faithful to drink the oil at specific time, while reciting certain verses of the Book of Psalms, etc. Flee from all these satanic practices and come out of all these satanic sects. Know that you can use any oil of your choice particularly that which you have at your disposal, instead of indebting yourself to buy specific oil prescribed by these sorcerers. Greedy sorcerers use this to make great profits today. 
they sell satanic oils to people while deceiving them that these oils come from Israel. The blood of Jesus, the name of Jesus, and the fire of God the blood of Jesus, the name of Jesus, and the fire of God, are all weapons that the child of God has at his disposal for the daily warfare. Satan's agents often make the effort to create confusion in the minds of ignorant children of God, about the use of God's fire in warfare. To put an end to the seduction of these demons, I thought it best to treat this subject completely in a separate teaching, entitled The Fire of God, which you will find on the website www.mkavail.org. I recommend it to you. Praise and worship praise is also a very powerful weapon for spiritual warfare. Know that every time you praise God, you are fighting a great warfare, especially if you do it with a pure heart. You should therefore commit yourselves to praise and worship by singing spiritual hymns to the Lord. Organize your Christian life in such a way as to spend a lot of time in praises. You do not need to praise the Lord only when you are in the assembly. Apart from the time spent in the assembly, every child of God must have his own moment of praises. And generally when you praise God before going to bed, you have a good sleep, free from demonic attacks. The word of God quoting the Bible while waging warfare or while praying is a very powerful weapon. Satan seriously dreads the word of God. Make sure you quote the verses from the Bible corresponding to the warfare you are fighting. Beware of carnal weapons as we have pointed out in the chapter on deviations, while some satanic sects prescribe objects of different kinds to their followers for spiritual warfare, there are some ignorant pastors who ask their faithful to eat lots of meat in order to be strong in spiritual warfare. Watch out for all these lies. Remember that spiritual warfare is indeed spiritual, and no carnal object whatsoever can be of any use to you. Likewise, no type of food or meat is useful to you in spiritual warfare. It is the opposite of this prescription, which is true. It is in fasting and prayer that true spiritual warfare takes place. Flee from all those who prescribe this kind of madness. Conclusion Dear brethren, spiritual warfare must not be considered as a separate topic, but instead as part of our pilgrim life. You should therefore not neglect spiritual warfare. But watch out that it does not become a subject of pride to you, and it should not also be an element of seduction. Driving out demons or having some victories in warfare is not proof that you fear God, or that your life is in order before God, or even that heaven is open before you. Warfare as we have just studied is something difficult and delicate, and to be victorious, children of God must make every effort to deny themselves and cling to the truth. I have endeavored in this teaching to give you the maximum elements in spiritual warfare. However, there are some elements of warfare that I have chosen not to develop for fear of exposing children of God, who despite all the warnings that I have given, might still venture into the camp of Satan and be destroyed. The fact of not developing these points on warfare is not in any way holding the truth captive, but instead the desire to preserve or protect those who still do not know how to make the difference between their zeal, very often not channeled, and the knowledge of the things of God. Nevertheless, I firmly believe that the Holy Spirit will reveal it to you if he judges you worthy of being able to victoriously fight that type of warfare. Several times, brethren after listening to the teachings were touched by the doctrine of the Lord Jesus Christ, and asked me who I was, and why this truth had remained hidden until now. Some do not hesitate to say that I am like the Lord Jesus. To this, I would like to bring some precision. You should understand beloved that a simple instrument cannot be like the one who made it. Jesus Christ is the only master, and I am only an instrument amongst the many that he chooses to use. I therefore find it pretentious to be considered like the Master. I know that the Word of God tells us in Luke 6.40 that the disciple is not above his Master, but an accomplished disciple shall be as his Master. But even if the Lord were to consider me as an accomplished disciple, I would always keep myself from thinking that I am like him. For those of you who also want to know who I am, my answer has always been this, I am simply your brother, a child of God like others. I am just a poor mortal. I am not anything special, just somebody that God in his great love and mercy has chosen to consider amongst his numerous servants. In these end times, I had the privilege to have been chosen by God to be as our brother John the Baptist used to say, the voice of one crying in the wilderness. The battle has not been easy, but Jesus Christ my shield has always come to my assistance. The more the enemy multiplied his attacks, the more the Lord reinforced his security around me. I lead all the circumstances of your life. 
This word the Lord gave me at the beginning of my ministry has always been the precious instrument which, in all the difficult moments I endured, gave me the courage I needed in order to move forward, and the necessary strength to remain steadfast. As for testimonies, the Lord has given me sufficiently, enough to make several books, if I were to write them. Tribulations have been as numerous as possible, and trials have also been my share. I was not spared the attacks. They have been many. Several times Satan sent his agents to set traps for me. Some agents of Satan moved from one continent to another, to attack me. Others traveled across several countries, just to accomplish the mission of Satan. There are even bold and determined agents of Satan who have moved from their country to settle in mine, and precisely in the city where I live, to fight me more closely. This allows us to understand with what seriousness Satan fights those Jesus Christ has chosen for himself. With this, we see with what commitment the camp of Satan mobilizes itself each time there's a grain of light in the world, so as to quench it. Satanists can claim to have some victories over us, but always know that their victories over us are temporal, whereas ours over them are eternal. The Lord Jesus Christ our Master and our God is the strongest, and the fire of hell awaits Satan and his agents forever. Alleluia. Like my brother Paul, I can by faith declare, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. 2 Timothy 4, 7-8